Let's assemble our quilt along quilt. Hi there and welcome to the Shiryu channel. My name is Irene and this video is kind of a special one. Today we will be assembling the quilt along quilt. So here are all my rows from the Shivery Luminina quilt along. 12 rows in total and today I'm going to assemble them and show you how I'm going to do that. So all the things that are going to happen in this video are I'm going to uh, trim or uh, resize my uh, rows until they are all the same length and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it and then I'm going to add sashing between the rows and join everything together so uh, oh and also of course when your quilt top is done you can enter the raffle for the giveaway for one of the three Bernina's 570 QEs uh, or one of the three uh, ruler kits from Bernina and what you need to do to enter the revel uh, I will explain at the end of this video as always the written instructions are on the Bernina blog so you can hop over there by clicking a link in the comments below and um, then let's get started so the first step today is to uh, make all the rows the same length and it may sound a little bit odd uh, when you're following a quilt pattern that you have to make the rows the same length but in this quilt long that's the case because all the rows have different patterns and different techniques and different methods so um, some of the patterns just turn out uh, longer or shorter so the row, uh, the row of that pattern turned out longer or shorter um, that's just the way it was in this quilt long no problem at all um, and that also gave you some wiggle room so it's no problem when your row turned out shorter or longer uh, we're just going to go through every uh, row and I'm going to show you how you can make it a little bit longer or um, how to trim it and I am going to size all my rows to 70 and a half inch so the pattern of the completed quilt is 70 by 90 inches so adding a half an inch seam allowance so a quarter inch on all sides uh, that will give me uh, rows that need to be 70 and a half inch long so the first thing I'm doing is giving my rows a press I don't know how or where you stored your rows but I had them folded up in boxes so they can uh, really use a, uh, a press so let's do that first. There we go, the first three rows are pressed. There we go, so here we have a complete view of my cutting mat and I have a very wide cutting mat, so I'm going to use this to measure the width of my um, rows. And this cutting mat is 36 inches, and I want to make my rows 70 and a half inch in total, so that should be 35 and a quarter inch when you fold it double. So that is a measure that I am going to use to trim my rows but just in case you don't have a cutting mat like this um, what you could do is lay out um, a measuring tape in inches um, and tape that down on your table and then just have your cutting mat uh, at the end of it so that you can place your row folded double um, from the zero to uh, 35 and a quarter inch mark on um, that measuring tape so that could help um, or you can fold it four times but that's a little bit less um, precise uh, but when you do fold it four times then you need to have 
what is it half of 35 and <laughs> that's 17 and a half plus one eighth of an inch so that's kind of an odd measure so I think it is the easiest to take your row to fold it double and to have those edges nicely lined up and I'm just checking so my blocks should roughly <laughs> well, are roughly should be the same size so I'm just checking um, those seams a little bit so that is nicely folded in half just going to pat it a little bit and then here we have the fold line on this side and then you can line it up with a line on your cutting mat or when you have your measuring tape uh, taped down on your table you can line it up with that so can't you line it up like this then get my rotary cutter and my ruler um, and then I'm going to cut it so uh, here we have the fold line here we have the measurement going all the way up to 35 and a quarter because 2 times 35 and a quarter is 70 and a half and this row turned out a little bit longer than uh, needed so I'm just going to trim this off Ooh, feels a little bit scary but there we go this row is now officially 70 and a half inch long so that's what we're going for. This row is done. I'm going to put that aside and take the next one. So what you can do when a row is uh, too short, so I'm just going to explain it for every row. When this one would be too short, I would just add background to it because the edge is already background and when you add more background to it that no one will see that your row was a little bit shorter. Uh, let's see, folding this one. So, and the reason why your row can be a little bit longer or shorter, uh, some rows it was the pattern, so some rows I just made longer because that was uh, convenient with the size of the blocks. Um, so those have some extra background fabric on the outside and you need to trim like the one with the cross stitch uh, and sometimes it's just because you have a lot of seams and if you have a not precisely a quarter inch uh, seam allowance on every seam then they will be a little bit bigger or shorter no problem at all so this one I guess it's almost good uh, well it is 35 and a half so this will be 71 inches when I would fold it open so I'm just going to trim it up a little bit there we go trimming it to 35 and a half no 35 <laughs> and a quarter uh, as you can see there was just a tiny bit but um, also if you had more it would be perfectly fine if you would chop off a little bit on this side or chop off a little bit on this side um, that's that is just okay if you really don't want to chop off a, a block like this you could uh, undo this seam so pick this seam with your seam ripper and then make this strip uh, a little bit shorter so that you don't have to cut up uh, from this pink fabric so that is when your row is too long and with this one when it would be too short I would just go ahead and add a little bit of background fabric on both ends and that's how I would fix this one I think that would count for most of the rows when it's a little bit short but you, here you can just add a little bit of background here we go this is row one 
There we go. Lining it up. And this was a paper beasting row. So uh, let's check. Always double check before you cut. It would be so sad if you cut it. It's not going the way you want it. So 35 and a quarter inch. There we go. Um, so this row was all paper piecing, um, but then still the segments of paper piecing should be joined. So uh, there it could vary a little bit that your row becomes longer or shorter. Uh, in this case it was a tiny bit longer, but it's no problem to chop off those triangles a little bit. So if your row is way too long, just chop it off, that's no problem. And if it's way too short and you don't want to add background fabric, you could make an extra uh, piece of um, uh, foundation paper piecing. So you could just add a section to it and then chop that off until the size that you need. So that's how you can make this one longer or shorter. So there we had the first three rows. I am going to give those other rows a press and come back to you to show you for each one how you can make it longer or shorter. So there we are back at the cutting table. Uh, all the rows are pressed. So now I can continue trimming them. So here we have the row mowed lawn. And for every row it's just going to be the same, folding it in half, then checking how long it is. And if this row turned out too short, you can easily just add a little strip of um, background fabric to both ends because we have that after each block we have a strip of background fabric. Just going to put my ruler on it. Tiny bit of trimming needed. So if your row turned out way too long, um, I think it's okay to just trim it off. Uh, let's say I needed to trim it until here. It wouldn't be that weird because then at both ends you would have half a block that could be or um, if you don't like that you and you have a lot to trim uh, then maybe you can cut away one of the blocks and uh, make it that you have a little bit of background fabric over here uh, so that you get rid of one of the blocks if your row turned out really really long uh, that could also be an option for this one. Ooh, yes, the foundation paper piecing one with the arrows. Could be that I've already trimmed this one. I know that I have trimmed a few in the videos. Uh, just going to check how long it is. This one is a little bit over 35. Only need to trim a tiny bit. Yeah. Guess I already trimmed it, but um, yeah, so this one is also easy to make a little bit longer or shorter. You have a little bit of wiggle room over here. Uh, so yeah, that should be fine. You can uh, trim away the background or add some more background if it's too long or too short reverse applique with the wobbly bobbly <laughs> wobbly wobbly shapes there we go let's see this one is quite a little bit too long um, and it would be nice if I wouldn't have to cut away uh, the yellow fabric so that I could at least stay away a quarter inch from the yellow. Uh, so I'm just going to check on the other side. I guess what I'm going to do for this one is trim one side first because uh, as I noticed I need to trim away quite a bit. The row is just over 35 and a half 
and I'm just going to check which side has the most background fabric sticking out and that's this one so what I'm going to do is trim one side first there we go so here I have a quarter inch from the yellow so I know that my um, binding is going to touch the yellow when that's done again placing this edge on 35 and a quarter there we go keeping it in place with my ruler that is going to work yay so um my yellow is lining up on the 35 as you can see over here so <laughs> the yellow is uh, lining up with the 35 so when i cut now 35 and a quarter then i'm just not cutting through the yellow yay there, there we go. So for me, this just worked out. Um, as you can see, I have a quarter inch on this side. That's just fine. Um, if you don't mind, you can cut away. If yours is much longer, your row, uh, you could cut away, of course, until the yellows uh, are trimmed. Uh, that could be fine if you want to. Um, or you could redo a section where you have the yellows more to this side where you have the yellows more to the inward side uh, so that you don't have to trim away the yellow so those are options that you have or what you could do is unpick this seam cut a little bit from this side of this block and then sew it together so then you don't need to trim away from this side but you can trim away from this side um, but for me, for now, this is uh, fine. So when your row turned out too short, just add some background fabric to it. And now we have hashtags. This is an easy trimmable row because it has quite a lot of background fabric on the outside ends. So let's give it a little shake and see how long We've made this one. <laughs> that one is quite long. Lightening it up on my mat. And then I'm just going to trim away. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of fabric on this side. And my 35 and a quarter is over here. So that is the amount of fabric that I'm going to trim away. To make it 70 and a half inch long there we go all done oh and with the hashtags um, when you have to cut away way more than this uh, you can either choose to chop off a little bit of your hashtag or maybe you want to unpick this seam and make these outer uh, sashings a little bit smaller uh, so that you don't have to cut through your hashtag so those are options there so for this one and uh, this is almost 36 inches uh, I'm going to, going to do the same as I did um, with uh, the wobbly wobbly so I am going to line out the one side so I'm going to take the side with the triangle because I don't like to cut that up um, even though I think it would look fine if you would chop it up uh, but <laughs> I'm just going to line this up at 35 and a quarter then use my ruler on this end Oops. to keep this in place So my ruler I'm just placing on the uh, beginning of my mat, so on the zero inch line uh, because then this is not going to move uh, while I fold the other piece back. 
there we go and I can fold this back and now when I'm trimming uh, the bottom is already on the 35 and a quarter line and I can just trim off this this top side so when I would now trim 35 and a quarter um, then I'm not trimming the bottom there we go that's nicely 35 and a quarter and that is how my ants look so this row you can continue adding pieces so when the board's too short uh, you could just add some strips in the same pattern as the row to it and of course it's easily trimmable so you can make it as short as you want next one Tetris I believe this row was pretty long yeah it's quite long so we need to trim away but this one is um, symmetrical so both ends are the same so you can trim away as much as you want and the row will still look fine because the Tetris shapes just run off the edge so there is no problem at all by chopping off as much as you want or need <laughs> so there we go 35 and a quarter 35 and a quarter yes jump, jump. and yeah that's it that is 35 and a quarter and this is how the row looked so if yours did turn out shorter then just add another piece uh, of the row to it to make it a little bit longer and then you will continue the pattern I think that will look a little bit better and then just adding background strip but of course background strip is also possible for all the rows by the way if you just want to make it yourself a little bit easy just add background strip when your row turned out too short here we have the all together row really nice to go through all the rows and see everything again but this was the final row that we did last month this one I think it's perfectly 35 and a quarter inch for me aha yep that is 35 and a quarter inch yay that turned out um, exactly the way it should uh, yeah but if yours turned out shorter maybe you can replace these strips by a little bit wider strips uh, and if it turned out too long maybe you can remove those strips or just trim it because if your row ends here that also will look perfectly fine in your quilt um, so those are your options over there uh, but this one is already done for me don't need to trim it the dot 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 row this one is quite a bit too long for me and I'm just going to check my spot on the other sides uh, on the other side to see uh, where it ended but it ended well before the 35 inch line so when I cut 35 and a quarter that will be fine because then I won't trim away my shape um, so I'm going to do that it's good over here 35 and a quarter trimming away from both ends so that's good that looks good um, so what you do in case this row turned out shorter then just add background to it that would look fine when it turned out way too long you can either choose to chop off a little piece of your shape or maybe you could unpick these seams and make these blocks a little bit closer together um, then, then you don't have to trim through these blocks and then the final one and I've noticed that this is the only one that still has uh, teabag paper on the back and as you can see with blocks with bigger pieces teabag paper easily um, peels away so uh, easily uh, gets loose so what I'm doing is just um, checking the loose big pieces and uh, ripping away everything that's already like this 
uh, because all the other rows don't have tea bag paper behind them uh, so yeah you could just do it ripping away could also leave it here but oh well it tears so easily so it's no big deal to rip it away and if little pieces are left behind the fabric completely fine no big deal so I'm just going to leave the rest over there then fold it in half and see what we've got here for our length of the row I think this could be exactly 35 and a quarter looks like it that's nice so placing a ruler over here oh, it's almost 35 and a quarter a little bit extra well shifted it 35 and a quarter I'm just going to trim off this little piece sticking out uh yeah that's the correct size um so that's good and I guess it should be kind of the correct size because we did it with um, paper piecing so that is quite precise um, but what if your row turned out shorter for this one hmm a little bit tricky maybe because it's hard to add a small piece of the triangle over here so I would say background fabric would be the easiest to um, make this row a little bit longer. Hey, this would be a fun quilting pattern. Would make a pretty cool quilt, I guess. <laughs> oh well, that will be your next project. Uh, but yeah, to make it longer, I would think add a little bit of background fabric over here. That will probably be the easiest. Um, yeah, because making the triangles on the side bigger quite uh, difficult I guess to accomplish so that was the last one of the 12 rows that I have over here and now they are all 30 uh, 35 and a quarter inch that is 70 and a half inch in total and the next step I need to do is to add sashing to it so the next thing on the to-do list today is adding sashing and for that I've cut eight strips of one and three quarter inch um, and then just as wide as your fabric is uh, that should be enough for all the sashing for this quilt and now I have those separate strips which are not um, 70 and a half inch so they are um, what is the width of fabric about 42 inches I guess so I'm just going to sew all these strips and do one long strip and then cut those up to strips of uh, 70 and a half inch so I'm going to cut them up on forehand to the width of my rows but let's first sew them together So after sewing this together, uh, I need to trim it up to pieces of um, 35 and a quarter inch. Um, so I'm just going to uh, 35 and a quarter inch for the double, of course. Uh, so I am going to lay this side at I don't know 35 and a half or something, uh, folding a double over here. There we go. Let's see. So you have to have the fold over here on the zero mark. And then don't want to stretch it too much, but I do want the fabric to be laying flat. There we go. And then I can trim it on 35 and a quarter in. So there you have a strip of 70 and a half. 
Let's repeat that <laughs> for the other strips. Okay, so sashing done. Uh, the rows are all trimmed. Now I can start assembling the quilt. Uh, and I'm going to do that row by row, starting at the top. So the top of the row, well, the top of the quilt is this row. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin a sashing to that row because um, normally I don't pin, uh, but to get this uh, on the row and sew it most evenly so that uh, sashing isn't stretching or that I don't have to stretch the row. I'm going to pin it at, at the beginning, at the end, in the center and then add some extra pins. Um, I'll just show you that you know what I mean. Here we have my little friend with pins. Uh, here we have the row. This side is up, this side is down, so on the bottom side I need to have my sashing. There we go. And I'm just going to pin it at one side. And pin it at the other side. There we go. And then, <laughs> it's a little bit long to um, show this in the screen, but I'm just going to hold this up. Um, well, I think I can show it like this. Just going to fold it and then fold it up. So then I will have the center of my sashing and the center of my row over here. So when I let it drop down, here I have the center of my row and the center of my sashing. So I can pin that. And then I guess I'll do the same again for holding the side up to the center. So that will give me a pin over here. Might look a little bit messy what I'm doing now, but Actually, I'm first pinning the outsides of the row, then I'm placing a pin in the center of the sashing center of the row, and then this is on a quarter of the row, and then I can just place a pin. This lies nicely flat, so I'll just place a pin in the center over here. And that's enough pinning for me so uh, maybe if you like to place extra pins in the center of these parts go ahead and uh, pin as much as you want so this needs to be pinned so I'm folding this edge to the center of the row and then finding the center of the row and the center of the sashing there we go Let's stick a pin in there and then here as well. There we go. And then on this side as well, one final pin. And for me, this is pinned enough. So this is ready to go to the sewing machine. And I'm just going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, yeah, nothing uh, fancy. Just a normal stitch length and a quarter inch seam allowance. And that is the very first piece of sashing added to the top row. Uh, I'm going to fold this open finger press a little bit and then give it a press 
And then I'm going to add the second row to here. So there we have row one and session one. Now time to add uh, the second row. So let's get that one and see where the accent piece is going to be. So here we have the accent piece on this side. Here we have the row. So this accent piece should also be over here. Uh, yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do now, just going to <laughs> drop the video a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, because it's getting big, of course, we are making a big quilt, so it's all getting big. Long, long pieces of quilt. Uh, but yeah, what I'm going to do is add this to this. So just make sure that you have the accent pieces uh, where you want them. And I'm going to flip this on top of each other. And then right at the beginning, I'm going to line it out and stick a pin in here. And I'm going to do the same at the other side. So don't worry about the middle. Just going to line it up on this side. And stick a pin in there. That is two pins. Now I'm just going to pick up uh, both sides, fold it double and wiggle it a little bit. So what you want is these two to line up. So just put your fingers there inside then line up. So these should nicely line up inside of each other. There we go. And you only need to worry about the fold. So I'm not lining it up over here yet, but I'm only lining it up at the bottom. There we go. I'll just keep my finger here so that I have this spot secured. Then sticking a pin in there. So the center is now secured and the sides. So then again, I can just fold the side to the center and then do the same. So wiggling this a little bit until those are aligned over here. And this is just the way that I like to do it. Right? Um, maybe you found another way to line up uh, the rows. Perfectly fine. Um, I could also imagine that you lay it out on the floor and uh, line it up over there. But this works for me, so <laughs> I'm going with this. Um, so this little piece from pin to pin. Uh, oh, wiggling it a little bit until it's nicely lined up. And then sticking a pin in the center. Then over here as well, from the center pin to this pin. Lining that up. There we go. There's another pin. And then this side, we only had a pin at the end and a pin at the center. So picking it up. Wiggling a little bit. Yep. There we have the center of the part. Here we can place a pin. Whoops. There we go. And then over here as well. So again, for me, these are enough pins. I just don't like to pin so much, but... <laughs> I think I can get away with this amount of pins. So uh, uh, yeah, that part is pinned. If you like to secure it even more and place many more pins, that's perfectly fine. Uh, just go what, with what feels good. Uh, but yeah, now it's ready to uh, sew again. Joining row one. 
and row two together. So there we have row one and two sewn together with the sashing in between. And with cutting the sashing on forehand, you have it nicely lined out at the sides because the rows are cut to 70 and a half inch and the sashing is cut to 70 and a half inch. So that will give you a nice, um, uh, how do you say that? Uh, well, just nice length to uh, to work with and you don't have to stretch the sashing or stretch the rows while you're sewing. Um, and this process, uh, just put it on repeat. Um, yeah, maybe I can show you uh, where to place the sashings uh, instead of that you have to see me repeat this step over and over again. So don't have a design wall yet so I'm just using my fabrics so here we have it and then we have a row of sashing then we have the cross stitch row I'm just going to overlap it a little bit otherwise um, it won't fit <laughs> but uh, after the cross stitch row we will have another sashing. So basically all the rows that will get sashing uh, are the rows that go from side to side. Um, what I mean by that is that the colored fabric is going from one side to the other side. So also with this one, the pink is going to go all the way from here to here. Um, so also after this orange row, there's going to be sashing. Then we have the papaya row with hashtags. And also, well, now we have to uh, check because this row uh, didn't go all the way from side to side. So on the bottom, uh, the yellow goes all the, all the way to this one, to this side, but on the top, the yellow doesn't go all the way to the top, so that means that there is already sashing on this row. There also is an overview of where to put sashing on the side, but if you just want to go sewing, uh, you can check it this way. So if there is session, if there is color all the way to the side of the row, um, then you don't, do need to put sashing, and if there is no fabric all the way to that side, then you don't need to put sashing. So this row, can be joined without putting a sashing in between. Uh, but on the other side of the yellow one, we do need sashing. Then we have arrows. Those need sashing. Then mode lawn sashing. We're almost there. Um, this one delta, and then after delta we have the dot dot dot, and this one has sashing on both sides already. So we don't need to put sashing on either side of this one. So we can just add it to the delta row and then we can add the row all together. Also without sashing. Then final strip of sashing. So it's still in the frame. <laughs> Let me turn it a little bit. There we go. Then uh, sashing and then our final row. There we go. A whole wall of 
pretty rose. Uh, yeah, so that is what we're going to sew together. So this one doesn't need sashing on either side. And the yellow one needs sashing only on the bottom side. Uh, that's where to put sashing. Um, if you want to make your quilt in three pieces, then just hop over uh, to the blog to see where to put the sashing uh, and how to make it in three pieces. Or um, decide for yourself which rows you're going to join. Um, I think it's 12 rows, so it's best to do four, four, four uh, in each section. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, this is the information you need to put your quilt up together. So I'm going to put mine together and then show it to you and give you all the information you need to enter the giveaway. together all the rows are joined let me see I have to make this time done because it's a big one here it is the whole quilt assembled so eventually I assembled six rows together and then did the six other rows because it was just a lot it also weighs quite a lot, so um, there it is, ta-da! It's really not fitting in the frame, <laughs> but here is the quilt. All the rows together. On the bottom, what a big one! such a huge quilt well of course people are making bigger quilts than this but uh, for me this is pretty huge oh hello kitty I have an illegal visitor <laughs> bye bye uh, where were we so um yeah it's all together the whole quilt top is done. I really hope you feel super proud that you've made it, that you assembled something this big, that you worked on something for so long. So please do a happy dance with your quilt and uh, celebrate that you made it this far because it's awesome. Yes, and I think you're awesome for participating and sewing along for a whole year. So the top is done. It's not officially a quilt yet. It's a quilt top. Uh, but I am going to show you in the next videos how to change this into a real quilt. Let me just fold this <laughs> and then uh, I'll share some more details so um, next week I'm going to share a video so you don't have to wait four weeks now until a new video comes up and so next week I'm going to share a video on how to make a quilt sandwich um, so showing you how to make the quilt sandwich for this one um, and I like to do that with spray basting so that's the technique that I'm going to show you. Um, but if you don't like spray basting, if you like to baste it by hand, uh, feel free to use whatever you like, whatever method you like. But next week I'm going to show you how to um, make a quilt sandwich. Am I going to show you already what kind of backing I'm using? Mm, yes, yes I am. 
So this is the fabric that I picked for the backing of my quilt. It is a, um, what is it? It's a Ruby Star uh, fabric. And I just think it's super fun and happy with the pink. It matches the, the pink fabric that I used in the front. And uh, it has a little yellow that's also in the front of the quilt. So I think it's fun to uh, uh, use a quirky, fun fabric for the back. Um, so this is going to be a sandwich next week. And then in the weeks after that, I'm going to quilt the quilt. So this one I'm going to quilt with rulers, mostly a straight ruler, uh, but also some uh, rulers with curves. So if you have a quilting foot on your machine, or a ruler foot I mean, and if you have some rulers, uh, then join me in uh, quilting this with rulers. But um, as I already promised, I also am going to show you how to quilt your quilt with kind of wavy lines that you can make with your uh, walking foot. So uh, if you don't want to do anything fancy, you can um, uh, quilt your quilt with a, a walking foot and make a wavy line. And I don't, I say don't do anything fancy, but in the end you're having a beautiful quilted quilt. So uh, it's not that the ruler work is going to make your quilt prettier. It's just a different feel that uh, will be given to your quilt. Um, just a different kind, just a different style of quilting. <laughs> I'm just going to sit down for a bit. I'm out of breath so quickly now. Uh, due to being pregnant. <laughs> so, uh, <sighs> um, yes. What else do I want to share? Um, yeah, quilting. So I'm also going to show you how to quilt your quilt when you have it in three sections. And that I'm going to um, do with straight line quilting. Well, uh, kind of straight line. It's more like a wavy line, but you can do that with a walking foot or with your normal foot on your machine. So if you don't have anything fancy, you're completely fine. Uh, I'm going to show that on a quilt top if you have it in three parts but you can do that as well if you have it in one whole part so um if you have your quilt top in one hole want to quilt it in one hole don't want to use rulers uh, then you can also check how the wavy line thing um, looks so that's also an option uh, and then after i've quilted the three uh the quilt top that was in three sections uh, then I'm going to join those, of course, and going to show you how to make that into one big quilt. After that, I'm also going to put a binding on the quilt and show you how I do that. There are so many different uh, ways to do a binding, but I'm sharing the one that I like the most, where I sew the binding to the front and then hand stitch it to the back. I guess that's everything that's coming up, so a lot of videos are... Uh, coming up after um, this one, so after we've finished the top of the quilt. Now there is some important information that I need to share with you about the giveaway. So Bernina is going to give away three uh, sewing machines. Three times the Bernina as 570 QE. So the quilters edition of the 570. So the Bernina quilters edition, which is an awesome machine. Uh, I really love my 770 and uh, uh, thank you Bernina for giving away three of the 570 QEs. It's awesome. Uh, so uh, there will be a raffle and there will be three um, sewing machines and three times the ruler kit. How to enter the raffle? Well you have to finish your quilt top. You don't have to quilt it, you don't have to have the quilting finished, but you have to assemble the quilt top in one section, so in one hole like I did in this video, or in three sections. That's also okay. So you need to finish the quilt top, make a picture of it, and then share that on the Bernina blog or on Instagram. And the exact details on how you can share it on the Bernina blog or what you need to add uh, to your post when you post it on Instagram um, you can read it in the description of this video and more uh, elaborately, how do you say that, more, <laughs> you can read all about it on the Bernina blog. Uh, and how to post it to the Bernina blog or what to add 
um, to the Instagram post, you can read on the Bernina blog. So if you want to participate in the raffle, make sure to read everything that's on today's Bernina blog post. Uh, the links are in the description down below. Uh, so yeah, you can read there how to enter the giveaway. And Bernina is going to pick six random winners. If you've won during the halfway giveaway, you have still a chance to win in the final giveaway. Um, and there is no jury, so we are not going to check who make, made the prettiest quilt top. Uh, it will be three random winners, so it does not matter if it's your first quilt or your hundredth hun hundred quilt. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you have, everyone has an even chance to win. So um, that's exciting. You have, um, and you have until the 26th of November to enter the giveaway. After that, we're picking a winner, and on Tuesday, the 2nd of December, uh, we're announcing who won the sewing machines. And you can hear that, or you can read who won on the Bernina blog, on my Instagram, and on the Sugardoo Facebook page. Well, I think that's it. I think that's all the announcements that I wanted to do. So then we're done. We're done with making our quilt top. So the quilt long is kind of finished. Of course, we're going to finish the quilt, but uh, the quilt top is done and I've already seen so many beautiful assembled quilt tops. So uh, if you want to check out other quilts, uh, please do make sure to hop over to Instagram, hashtag Benina quilt uh, Q-A-L. Uh, it's so cool to see uh, those all those rows together and uh, people who've already turned them into a quilt top. Uh, it's awesome to see. So if you're done yours and if you're on Instagram, please do post it um, with the hashtag. Uh, it's so cool to see uh, what you've been making, what you've been up to. Uh, or share it, of course, on the Shigurudu Facebook page. So that's it. That's the end of this video. Uh, I hoped you liked it. I hoped you enjoyed the Shiri Winning Quilt Long because I loved it. I loved doing this project for a whole year. It was long, but it was so super fun and mostly because all of you joined and you're so enthusiastic and uh, encouraging. I learned so much during this year. So thank you all for all your love and support. Thanks Bernina for doing this uh, quilt along with me, for having me host it on the Bernina blog and sponsoring the sewing machines that uh, you're going to give away. So um, I'm a happy quilter and I'm super duper happy with my finished quilt top. I hope you're too and I hope to see you again next week when we're going to make a sandwich and I hope you'll stay tuned until the very very last stitch on the quilt. Thanks so much for watching, have a wonderful day, have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!